Hi there. Welcome to another eye-opening episode of Centurions, a documentary series that features man-made things that have lasted 100 years and more. On this episode, we will be in the searchlight on Silk. The production of silk originated in Neolithic China within the Yangshao culture. Though it will later reach other places in the world, the art of silk production remained confined to China until the Silk Road was opened in 114 BC. Though China maintained its virtual monopoly over silk production for another thousand years. The use of silk within China was not confined to clothing alone. Silk was used for a number of applications, including writing. Within clothing, the color of silk worn also held social importance and formed an important guide of social class during the Tang Dynasty. Silk cultivation had reached Japan by 300 AD and by 552 AD, the Byzantine Empire managed to obtain silkworm eggs and were able to begin silkworm cultivation. The Arabs also began to manufacture silk at the same time. As a result of the spread of sericulture, Chinese silk exports became less important, although they still maintained dominance over the luxury silk market. The Crusades brought silk production to Western Europe, in particular to many Italian states, which saw an economic boom exporting silk to the rest of Europe. Developments in manufacturing technique also began to take place during the Middle Ages, which is from the 5th to the 15th centuries, with devices such as the spinning wheel first appearing at this time. During the 16th century, France joined Italy in developing a successful silk trade, though the efforts of most other nations to develop a silk industry of their own were unsuccessful. The Industrial Revolution changed much of Europe's silk industry due to innovations in the spinning of cotton. Cotton became much cheaper to manufacture, leading to cotton production becoming the main focus for many manufacturers and causing the more costly production of silk to shrink. New weaving technologies, however, increased the efficiency of producing silk cloth. Among these was the jacquard loom, developed for the production of highly detailed silks with embroidery-like designs. An epidemic of several silkworm diseases at this time caused production to fall, especially in France, where the industry never fully recovered. In the 20th century, Japan and China regained their earlier dominant role in silk production and China is now once again the world's largest producer of silk. The rise of new imitation silk fabrics such as nylon and polyester has reduced the prevalence of silk throughout the world, being a cheaper and easier to care for alternative. Silk is now once again thought of as a luxury good with a greatly reduced importance compared to its historical heyday. The earliest evidence of silk dates back to more than 8,500 years ago and has been found at the early Neolithic Age tombs of Jiahu in China. Biomolecular evidence reported from a study showed the existence of prehistoric silk fibron in the tombs. Rough weaving tools and bone needles were also excavated, 
indicating the possibility that the Jahu residents may have possessed basic weaving and sewing skills required for making textiles. Other evidence of silk include items found at sites of the Yangshou culture in Jai County, Jiangxi, where a silk cocoon was found cut in half by a sharp knife, dating back to between 4000 and 3000 BC. The species was identified as Bomex mori, the domesticated silkworm. Fragments of a primitive loom can also be seen from the site of Hemudu culture in Yuyao, Zhenjiang, dated to about 4000 BC. The earliest example of a woven silk fabric is from 3630 BC, used as wrapping for the body of a child. The fabric comes from a Yangshao site in Xintangkun at Runyang, Henan. Similar remains of silk fabric were discovered at another Yangshao site located in Wangu, Henan in the year 2019. The fabric was used to wrap the body of a child placed inside a burial urn. Scraps of silk were found in a Liangzhu culture site in Qingxiangyang in Hangzhou, Zhenjiang, dating back to 2700 BC. Other fragments have been recovered from royal tombs in the Shang dynasty. During the later epoch, the knowledge of silk production was spread outside of China, with the Koreans, the Japanese, and later the Indian people gaining knowledge of sericulture and silk fabric production. Allusions to the fabric in the Old Testament show that it was known in Western Asia in biblical times. Scholars believe that starting in the 2nd century BC, the Chinese established a commercial network aimed at exporting silk to the West. Silk was used, for example, by the Persian court and its king, Darius III, when Alexander the Great conquered the empire. Even though silk spread rapidly across Eurasia, with the possible exception of Japan, its production remained exclusively Chinese for three millennia. The earliest examples of silk production outside China are from silk threads discovered from the Chan Hudaru site in the Indus Valley Civilization, which were dated 2450 BC. The analysis of the silk fibers shows presence of reeling and sericulture and predates another example of silk found in the Nevasa Peninsula in India, dated 1500 BC. The Siberian Ice Maiden, discovered in the Pazirik burials, was found clad in a long crimson and white striped woolen skirt. With white felt stockings, her yellow blouse was originally thought to be made of wild tusa silk, but closer examination of the fibers revealed the material not to be of Chinese origin, and was instead woven from a wild silk of a different origin, possibly India. Many myths and legends exist as to the exact origin of silk production. The writings of both Confucius and Chinese tradition recount that in about 3000 BC, a silkworm's cocoon fell into the teacup of the Empress Li Zhu. Wishing to extract it from her drink, the 14-year-old girl began to unroll the thread of the cocoon. Seeing the long fibers that constituted the cocoon, the Empress decided to weave some of it and so kept some of the cocoons to do so. Having observed the life of the silkworm on the recommendation of her husband, the Yellow Emperor, she began to instruct her entourage in the art of raising silkworms, which is basically what the word sericulture means. From this point, 
the girl became the goddess of silk in Chinese mythology. Knowledge of silk production eventually left China via the ear of a princess who was promised to a prince of Khotan, likely around the early 1st century AD. The princess, refusing to go without the fabric that she loved, decided to break the imperial ban on silkworm exportation. Though silk was exported to foreign countries in great amounts, sericulture remained a secret that the Chinese carefully guarded. Consequently, other cultures developed their own accounts and legends as to the source of the fabric. In classical antiquity, most Romans, great admirers of the cloth, were convinced that the Chinese took the fabric from trees. This belief was affirmed by Seneca the Elder in his work Phaedra and by Virgil in his work Georgics. Pliny the Elder notably postulated where silk came from, speaking of the bombyx or silk moth, which he wrote in his natural history book and I quote, they weave webs like spiders that become a luxurious clothing material for women called silk. In China, silkworm farming was originally restricted to women and many women were employed in the silk making industry. Even though some saw the development of a luxury product as useless, silk provoked such a craze among the high society that the rules in the Li Ji were used to limit its use to the members of the imperial family. For approximately a millennium, the right to wear silk was reserved for the emperor and the highest dignitaries. Silk was at the time a sign of great wealth due to its shimmering appearance created by the silk fiber's prismatic structure which refracted light from every angle. After some time, silk gradually extended to other classes of Chinese society, though it was mainly the uppermost noble classes. Silk began to be used for decorative means and also in less luxurious ways, such as in musical instruments, fishing and bow making. Peasants, however, did not have the right to wear silk until the Xing dynasty which reigned in China from 1644 to 1911. Silk was also used in making paper and paper made with silk became the first type of luxury paper. Researchers have found an early example of writing done on silk paper in the tomb of a marchioness who died around 168 AD. The material was more expensive but also more practical than bamboo slips. Treaties on many subjects including meteorology, medicine, astrology, divinity and even maps were written on paper made from silk. During the Han Dynasty, silk became progressively more valuable in its own right and was used in a greater capacity than simply as a material. Lengths of silk cloth were used to pay government officials and to compensate citizens who were particularly worthy. Thank you for watching the first part of the story of silk on Centurions. Please subscribe, like and share. My name is Dimitri. See you next time as the story continues and Bye for now.